Every fighter pilot remembers the first time they employed in combat and how special that moment was because all your life you've wanted to do something. And fighter pilot is not just a, not just a job, it's, a, it's an attitude, it's a mentality. On the one hand, you feel uh, a sense of accomplishment at doing a thing that you've been training to do, uh, to do it right and to do it well on your first try or your first, the first time you're really tested. On the other hand, you are, for the first time in your life, dealing with situations uh, that are matters of life and death for, for people. Hey, spread out, spread out. You realize how ops are different here in a deployed environment than they are back home. Uh, but you've never really had the experience to, to try your hand at any of those. You know, uh, how do you deal with responsibilities that you might have around here that, that aren't the same as back home? I grew up very quickly uh, based on some of the uh, deployments I did younger. When I was a younger aviator in my career, it all boils down to uh, a handful of sorties to where you make a difference, you personally make a difference, your flight makes a difference. Guess what? Mission is VFR. All right. Wow. Gorgeous. No issues. All right. So you guys are signed out. Done your caps. Go. Some of the situations that you, you hear about and you hope you never find yourself in. Um, I was flying with Hollywood. Uh, we're out doing some just some base defense type stuff, kind of low key, watching over, looking at different sites. When we got the call that there was a troops in contact about, say, 40, 50 miles away, which only takes us about five minutes to get there. Be advised, we uh, just had a medevac, multiple Americans wounded. We checked in. Uh, these guys are obviously, uh, they're screaming. They had taken casualties. As soon as I key in the the frequency to go to talk to the JTAC, you can hear the screaming in the background. You can hear the bullets firing in the background. You can hear him breathing heavy because he is running. We heard the dreaded words, um, uh, danger close, which meaning we're going to be employing, uh, in essence, right in the middle of their fight. The comms were terrible. Uh, I don't know if it's because his antenna's bouncing around as he's running down the streets trying to avoid fire, but I'm getting half of it. Hollywood's getting half of it. Well, our guys are getting shot up. We need those buildings dropped now. You know, we were trying to sort this out. It was very hectic, and our comfort level of where these, uh, where these bombs would go um, was not completely there yet. He's clipping for me, and I'm not comfortable dropping this bomb until we find out exactly what they want in the middle of a town. We're trying to piece this together. And uh, the one thing I will never forget is, if you don't drop those effing bombs right now, Americans are going to die. Americans are going to die if you don't drop the bomb. And at the time, you want to absolutely make sure, I mean, the worst thing for any, uh, any fighter pilot or anyone in this um, type of scenario would be to drop and to, to uh, hurt or kill uh, friendly people on the ground. We finally got it all together and able to put down a, a bomb, and you could just hear the calm in his voice. Sniper, good effect. And it was a big sigh of relief. We landed and were met uh, by the squadron commander. Uh, to, they had already called to let us know that uh, what we did that day saved American lives. You have an entire wing full of professionals that are out there representing Alabamians as well as the country to do it right. And that's kind of our unwritten pledge to them that we are professionals we are gonna do this right and execute the mission and come home with honor. And so you fly with these guys and you know you want to do everything perfect, you know, drop bombs where they need to go, be in perfect formation, be visual, be on the right radio channel, doing everything right, because you don't wanna let these guys down. And uh, that, I think, is probably more important than anything and a driving force for a, a young, you know, inexperienced wingman is that you, you can't let these guys down, so. There he is. I guess I'll stop talking about him. No, I don't stop talking about him. <laughs> Unless it's all bad. That's what we want, is for the young guys to look up to us, to see us doing it right. So obviously that's incumbent on us to make sure that we set a good example, do things right, as much as possible and then that's the example that they see and then they strive to also do at least as well if not better. We are lucky to have two very solid lieutenants. Uh, they've come over here and they've performed extremely well and don't tell them I said that. Um, 
That level of confidence of being here after the first time that they got to employ in true combat and the first time they take off over enemy territory, knowing that in a single engine aircraft, if I take a bird, if I have an oil problem, I might be dropping down into enemy territory and it's going to be a while before I'm picked up. Um, just, I can just, I, I remember those nerves the first time I flew across the border into Iraq and they have handled that extremely well and gotten past that and actually employed and have done phenomenal on their employments. The first time I stepped to an F-16 by myself uh, was, a, was an amazing experience to be walking out to a jet, essentially, essentially holding the keys to the aircraft uh, by yourself, no one with you to, to keep an eye on you. And now to be doing it here uh, in combat is an incredible uh, feeling of responsibility. Um, certainly I am reminded often personally of the fact that I graduated pilot training only two years ago. I graduated F-16 training a year ago and now here I am uh, doing it for real. Uh, it's, it feels like a lot of responsibility and it's an honor to uh, to be given that and to be entrusted with it. So, I mean, this jet is amazing and uh, I'm gonna be in charge of it tonight. So you gotta do everything right. Hey guys, what's up? The experiences that Split and I have gained over the course of this deployment are ones that you can only gain on deployment. Uh, you know, be it the flight hours, be it the you know, working with JTACs, be it the, the calm problems that you have with the high terrain around here. And those are things that you can talk about back home, you can train to back home, but the state of Alabama is, is a pretty flat place. You know, we, don't, we certainly don't have any 18, you know, 20,000 foot mountains around there, uh, you know, disrupting your calm, disrupting your line of sight. Uh, and so you take away experiences from here that you can't, uh, you can't simulate very accurately back home. And, uh, and having gone out here, having had the opportunity to actually work with guys on the ground, to make a difference in people's lives, to, you know, to drop ordnance and to make strafing runs that are going to ensure that people go home to their families is a, is a pretty awesome experience. Good hit, good hit. Everybody has been there as a lieutenant. and. Uh, uh, so to see those guys, you know, knowing when they come back and the training they get and the experience they get, uh, in, you know they're going to do well. Uh, but a great parallel is to think of uh, World War II when they gave, when guys were 19 years old and they came out with 100 hours of flying time and they were handed an airplane, a single seat P-51, uh, and they were sent to war. A lot of brave men uh, who took some pretty difficult steps in a very, very challenging time um, to make it possible for guys like myself to be here flying today. They fought very different wars. Um, their bravery was a different kind of bravery than ours, uh, a lot more sometimes in the face of the enemy. And that's something that I think all of us still respect. Uh, it still commands respect today. Our squadron, we are the uh, 100th Fighter Squadron, which is one of the four original fighter squadrons that were part of the 332nd group uh, that comprised the majority of the Tuskegee Airmen. Most everybody knows the history of the Tuskegee Airmen. They were the Red Tails. Uh, they were the all-black squadron in World War II that performed outstanding, providing support for the bomber missions. And it initially was an experiment to see if, you know, can someone who's black fly an airplane and, and go and be successful in combat? And obviously the short answer is yes. Uh, and they not only did it, they did it very well, uh, exceptionally well. And you fast forward that uh, through several iterations of fighter aircraft, and now we have the F-16, a uh, single seat, single engine multi-role fighter aircraft of the same lineage, same 100th Fighter Squadron. And we're here now in Bagram, Afghanistan, doing the same thing, taking the fight to the enemies of our nation and uh, supporting the men and women on the ground in close air support. One thing that, that I think this unit is very good at is stressing that there's a particular standard that needs to be met 
And then within the squadron itself, as far as doing their particular jobs, everybody also understands that their piece is a critical niche of everything that goes on for the squadron and in the squadron. I'm proud of what I did over here and I know everybody else is too because a well-maintained aircraft always makes the pilot feel more comfortable when they're flying, feel safer and makes them feel like they can get their job done better in a safer manner. The bottom line is they all understand what it means to be professional and they are the ones who are motivated to perform that way. They know what their jobs are, they know how to do them and do them well. There's always a legacy to uphold, but there's also your own legacy that you leave behind. What you do now reflects your life later on in the future. And it's all part of being from the South. Is It's part of our pride to let people know that the state of Alabama was here and to leave a good name and to set the standard high for the other units to come in and fill in behind us. For me personally, coming over here for six months uh, away from family, has been a challenge um, and it really makes you reckon with uh, what it means to serve and what it means to, uh, to be willing to answer your country's uh, call to duty. I mean that's something that I heard about, you know, that people talk about, but something that, you know, you never know until you actually felt it. You know, until you, until you hear gunfire going off in the background over this guy's radio uh, and you drop a bomb and it stops. And, you know, when he picks up, they get their stuff together and they're like, all right, we're going to press on with the exfil, you know, that's a, uh, that's a feeling that, that people had talked about, but, you know, having felt it now, it's pretty amazing. Um, I think when uh, guys looked up and they could see P-51s uh, supporting them, uh, you know, the P-51 obviously did ground attack, you know, when they could hear that P-51 coming overhead, I'm sure those guys on the ground, which uh, had incredibly um, uh, unfavorable odds on any given day that they went out to go fight. Uh, it made a difference in their lives. Uh, the F-16 and the role that we perform today and specifically the role we perform in Afghanistan which has to do with close air support and supporting U.S. coalition Afghan forces on the ground. Um, the, the airplane is, is the difference. I mean we own the sky. You know I think they take great pride not only in the close air support that the original Red Tails uh, performed. And I think this unit takes that performance and that combat record to heart. Uh, and they're not going to do anything to taint that record. But they definitely came here, wherever it emanated from, they came here with a sense of purpose. And their sense of purpose was to represent uh, their unit, their state, um, and their nation, and their Air Force incredibly well. And you can see that very, very conscious of the character of their service and the character of their performance. The Tuskegee Airmen uh, had to battle um, a lot of different things in order to be fighter pilots, not just learning how to fly and learning how to employ uh, a fighter aircraft in combat, but they also had to overcome all the uh, racial tension and stereotypes that exist in America. But at the end of the day, the most important thing was what kind of pilot were they, what, you know, what kind of excellence did they have, um, how did they fly the mission? How did they fight? And that's what truly determined uh, the success for those 996 airmen who graduated the Tuskegee experiment. And the exact same thing holds true today with, with Split and Lefty. Um, all, everything that they do is going to be uh, heavily scrutinized. And at the end of the day, uh, as long as they uh, meet or exceed the, the standard of the 100 fighter squadron, then they will continue to uh, be successful here and they will continue to do well. And I have every confidence in uh, both of those young men that they will do just that.